During the Tudor period, there were dozens of thousands of executions that took place in England. Henry VIII, for example, executed 70,000 people during his reign, and even had two of his own wives executed inside the walls of the Tower of London. There were a few methods of execution which were incredibly savage, including beheading by axe or sword, or hanging, drawing and quartering. The standard sentence for treason was this, and often it was commuted to beheading, depending on the relationship the condemned had with the king or the queen. But after someone lost their head, often it was placed on display in a number of locations. But there was one place in London where the heads of traitors were displayed that was infamous. London Bridge would be filled with spikes where heads were attached upon, and traders would regularly pass under these, and also people would see these every day when they crossed over the river. But there was a man whose job it was to look after and display these heads. Join us today as we look at the most brutal job in history, the Keeper of the Heads. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The Old London Bridge was where the heads were placed on top of. Building work began on this in 1176, and then finished in 1209, and the project must have cost a huge amount to finish. It was under King John when the work was completed, and the bridge spanned 282 metres long. It had 19 different piers and 19 arches, and also a wooden drawbridge which could isolate north to south. There were also houses built on the bridge, and at one point there were 140 of these in the 14th century. Many were only very small, but then during the Tudor period many of these were rebuilt. There were also a number of shops on the bridge, and the bridge actually became one of the main shopping streets in the capital, and there was also a chapel. Millions throughout the years would pass over the bridge, and would go under it, but it was over the drawbridge tower where many of the heads of traitors were displayed. When beheadings took place inside of London, they often took place at the public beheading spot on Tower Hill. People who were condemned would be briefly held inside the Tower of London or other prisons, then taken to Tower Hill to be beheaded by the axe. They were also hanged, drawn and quartered, mostly at Tyburn, but following the executions the heads of the condemned were then taken to London Bridge. The bridge was seen as the heart of the city, and the point of displaying the heads was to strike fear into the heart of the population, and to force them into submission. It was mostly those who were deemed traitors whose heads would be displayed on the bridge high up in the air. The heads of these condemned people were usually after execution brought to the bridge, but they were then handed over to the keeper of the heads. The keeper of the heads was a man who was deemed in charge and in control of this section of the bridge that dealt with the executed heads. He was a man who would take instruction from the monarchy and the local government, and then he would deal with the head. The heads would be dipped in tar and were often boiled by the keeper to ensure that they would stay preserved for longer, and they would be protected from the elements because of this. It was he who would also take down the old heads that had stood for some time, possibly even years, high upon the pikes, and then he would bring these down and throw them into the River Thames. After there was a pike free, the keeper of the heads would then place a newer and fresher head on the pike in the air. This was one of the most brutal and bloody jobs in history, and it was his job to keep the heads on the spikes fresh and also displayed well. He was seen as preserving the judgement and will of the king's law, and he would deal with some of the most high profile heads in his job. After the head was past its time on the pike, he would then throw them down, and as time went on a number of scores were found in the mud where the original bridge was pulled down. The first head it's believed that was placed on a spike above London Bridge was William Wallace, the rebellious Scottish military leader. He had been found guilty of leading a campaign against Edward I, but after his execution his body was sent to four corners of the realm of the King, before his head was set on London Bridge. In 1450, Jack Cade, who tried to lead a rebellion, failed to overthrow the government, and after this they put his head on London Bridge, to bring the population of London under submission and to tell the people what would happen if they rose up against the government and the king. But as the Tudor period came, the heads continued to roll, more so than they had before. It was said of London Bridge, upon this is built a tower, on whose top the heads of such have been executed for high treason, are placed on iron spikes, we counted thirty. But one of the most famous heads placed above London Bridge by the keeper was Thomas Moores, who in 1535 was executed. Moore, who was a friend of Henry VIII, refused to accept the king's changes to the church, 
and when his head was placed on a pike above the bridge, the Keeper of the Head let his head stay a long time suspended in the air. It would have been expected that the ghouls and birds would have feasted on his head, and that nothing would remain except putrid flesh and hollow eye sockets. It was said that Thomas More's daughter pleaded with the Keeper of the Heads not to throw her father's head in the river, and she asked to take the head so it could be interred along with his body. The Keeper surprisingly allowed this request, but he was amazed when he pulled the head down from the sky that Moore's head remained pink and looked as if he was sleeping and still alive. Also, the head of Bishop John Fisher was placed above London Bridge during Henry VIII's reign, as was Thomas Cromwell's. These were all close with the King and were very high profile, so the sight of their heads on the bridge would have been very shocking. The last head was installed on London Bridge in 1661, and then after this the heads were then placed on other places, such as Temple Bar and also Westminster Hall. One of the most shocking accounts of London Bridge during the Tudor period was when Catherine Howard, the teenage fifth wife of Henry VIII, was taken down river to the Tower of London. She had been accused of adultery along with two other men, and the heads of these men were placed on London Bridge, and then the young lady passed under the heads of her former lovers when she made her final journey to her place of imprisonment and execution. But the job of being in charge of the decapitated heads on London Bridge during the Tudor period would have been one of the most brutal and disturbing in history. It was the job of that man to preserve the heads of criminals and to strike fear into the hearts of the people inside of the city. It was a terrible job, but one that encapsulated the brutality of the medieval and Tudor period inside of London and inside of England. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.